And, uh, thank you for coming to my talk. Uh, today I'll be talking about uh, Histomics TK. Uh, it is a Python toolkit for analyzing histopathology data. Uh, firstly, I would uh, like, like to get a sense of my audience. So how many people here do image analysis or computer vision? Okay, how many people do machine learning? Okay, how many people are into biomedical? Great, okay, that's good. So first I'll start with um, uh, telling about the people behind this work. Uh, Histomics TK is being developed uh, as, uh, as part of collaboration between Kitware and uh, Emory University. Uh, the funding is coming from an NIH grant uh, from a program, called, a program that uh, aims to develop uh, information technology tools for cancer research. Um, so there are two faculty members at Emory University, Lee Cooper and David Gutman and uh, Kitware is the subcontractor on this grant. And uh, these are all the wonderful people, wonderful people behind this work. It's not me alone. Um, so first, I'll take a moment to uh, tell you about Kitware. Uh, Kitware is an open source uh, scientific computing company. And uh, we have people with uh, expertise uh, in the domains that you see here, uh, mainly medical image analysis. Uh, and computer vision, data and analytics, and high-performance high computing and visualization. Uh, we are heavily involved in developing a lot of open-source toolkits. Uh, some of the popular ones you probably might have heard are ITK. There was a talk on ITK by Matt a couple days ago in PyData. Uh, and there is a Slicer, which is a desktop application to view medical images and analyze them. Uh, JC here is the Slicer guy at Gitware, so if you have questions, you can go to him. Uh, and there's VTK, which is a very popular visualization library, and uh, CMake, which is a cross-platform build system. And there are several other toolkits which we work on. So uh, before I start with Histomics TK, I would like to introduce you to histopathology, if you haven't heard of it. So uh, what is histopathology? It is about uh, examining thin slices of diseased tissue uh, that are fixed on glass slides. Uh, you put them under a microscope and look at them at cellular resolution. Uh, and you usually apply chemical stains to them. You can think of them as uh, color dyes that basically highlight specific structures in these images, for example, nuclei, cytoplasm, or other kinds of structures or proteins that you're interested in, right? And uh, histopathologists typically look for uh, the, uh, look at the tissue architecture, and each disease has a particular manifestation on the tissue architecture. They look at the morphology of the cells and nuclei and extracellular structures that gives them information about um, what's going on with the disease or whether the disease is there or not. Um, histopathology is, uh, uh, is pretty much the gold standard in the diagnosis, staging, and prognosis of uh, several diseases, including uh, most types of cancers. Um, so recently, there were whole slide imaging systems developed. Uh, these basically scan the entire slide and produce uh, huge 2D images. Uh, and uh, so in the center, you see uh, an image. Uh, basically, uh, it's at the base resolution. It's at 40x magnification. It's about 50,000 pixels uh, across, so 50,000 pixels uh, tall. Uh, that's about 2.5 billion pixels uh, in uncompressed format, it's about uh, 7.5 gigabytes of data. And each of these images typically contains about a million nuclei uh, that you uh, want to analyze, right? And um, there are about uh, um, over 10 whole slide image system vendors right now. And if you look at the PubMed trends, there is an increased interest in whole slide imaging uh, currently. And uh, one of the biggest public data resource for this is uh, the Cancer Genome Atlas that is spearheaded by the National Institute of Health. Uh, this contains data for 33 different types of cancers uh, from 11,000 patients, and it contains data, seven different uh, kinds of data. And that's uh, all in all about 2.5 petabytes of data. And there are lots of studies that are going on uh, based on this data. Uh, so a few years ago, before we started on uh, the development of Histomics TK, uh, these two members that you see on the right from Emory University developed what is called a cancer digital slide archive. It's basically a viewer to uh, look at all the whole slide images that are 
part of the cancer genome atlas data set. Um, so they ingested about uh, 32,000 32, whole slide images uh, that uh, come from about 19,000 patients and 33 different cancer types. Uh, that is about uh, 15 terabytes of data. Um, and the, there is link of each whole slide image to other uh, data modalities as well. Um, so that's, uh, that's a humongous amount of data. And considering the scale of these images, you can imagine that it takes a lot of time for histopathologists to basically go through the image and arrive at a diagnosis or a prognosis. Right? So um, obviously there has been interest in developing computational techniques to inject some objectivity into this process. Uh, so each disease has uh, uh, a unique manifestation on the tissue characteristics of these images. They alter the uh, nuclear morphology in a, a specific way. So what um, uh, computational histopathology involves basically developing image analysis and machine learning algorithms to basically quantify uh, these um, uh, characteristics, these tissue phenomena with some quantitative features. And then uh, there are two goals. One goal is to uh, take these imaging biomarkers or features extracted from these images and you correlate them with the clinical survival data or clinical event data to build uh, survival models to tell uh, how aggressive aggressive the disease is or how long the patient will survive. And uh, with that, you can build tools, uh, decision support tools to recommend what kind of treatment the patient should go through. Uh, that is one goal. And the second goal is basically to understand uh, tumor biology itself. Uh, you basically correlate these imaging biomarkers with other, other genetic variables to understand the correlations. Uh, and hopefully that will uh, one day, uh, that will probably lead us to developing better cancer to drugs. So um, I, I've listed out the key requirements to make all this research possible. First thing is you need a web-based platform uh, for uh, data management and also analytics. Uh, the data sizes are too high for uh, moving the data around. Uh, so you have to bring the analysis to the data. And the second, we need, uh, there's a need for an open source platform as well. There are not many open source tools in uh, the pathology domain as, comp as compared to radiology or genomics. Uh, and uh, we want it to be open source, but also with a license uh, that permits commercialization. And there's, there's a whole lot of data management needs that come with it. And we need ability to visualize these whole slide images at different scales uh, to support the pathologist's uh, workflow. And we need uh, ways to do markup on these images, do annotations on these images. Uh, and we need a toolkit. Um, so the algorithm community needs a toolkit uh, with state-of-the-art algorithms to build upon. Um, and uh, they also need a platform to disseminate their new solutions, new analytic solutions somewhere for wider use by the community. Um, they need, and uh, the pathologists also need a platform to evaluate and pick among uh, all the state-of-the-art algorithms that are there. And lastly, uh, and most importantly, we have to build for the community and engage them. That way we'll collectively meet these scientific goals faster. So uh, our solutions are twofold. Uh, we have uh, one web application called Digital Slide Archive. Uh, it, uh, it aims to fulfill the data management needs of whole slide images. And the other is Histomics TK, which aims to ful fulfill the analytics needs uh, of this data. And uh, both these tools are open source with an Apache 2.0 license. Um, uh, and both these tools are based on what is called a girder um, that is under active development at Gitware. Uh, what is Girder? Girder is uh, a Python framework. It started as a data management platform, but now it's more than that. It is a Python framework uh, that helps you build web applications that store, manage, and process scientific data. Uh, that's the way I would like to put it. Um, so it has um, restful access to all the data that is stored inside, uh, and it supports multiple backends. You can have the data on the file system or Amazon S3, HDFS, or wherever. Um, and then the search cap capabilities, uh, which can be improved. Uh, and you, you can have users, groups, and there is a girder plugin which lets you do distributed task execution that is based on Celery underneath. Um, and there's a very nice plugin infrastructure that helps you build server-side analytics applications. Um, I'll do a demo of this uh, in a bit. And if you want to get a feel of it, you can go to data.kitware.com. It's, uh, uh, it's based on girder, so you get a feel of it. 
Um, so um, I'll start with the digital slide archive. This is basically an extension of Girder. Uh, these are some screenshots that I put if the demo doesn't work. Uh, so let me try. So this is the dashboard of the digital slide archive. Uh, it's basically an extension of Girder with a few features that are specific to histopathology. So there are collections which are essentially sort of uh, folder, folders. It's going to feel like a file explorer to you. So we have, in, we have ingestion scripts that ingest the data from the cancer genome atlas. And, um, and these are all different cancer types. And if I go into one of the cancer types, uh, in a bit. Yeah, these are all the patients for each cancer type. Uh, there are people with the disease and there are also people without the disease, so you can do machine learning on them. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a bit slow, but okay, I have a backup. Yeah, it's supposed to show thumbnails of those images. And uh, if I go into one of these images, um, there's an embedded viewer, so you can um, uh, link custom metadata tags to each of these images, uh, like clinical information, stain type, or any other information that is there. Right? And uh, so there is, let me go to the other one. So there are different kinds of asset stores. Uh, you can have the data on file system, or MongoDB, Amazon S3, or HDFS. Uh, you have user and group management, uh, and uh, most importantly, there is um, all the data is uh, there are rest endpoints to access the data. If there's an extensive amount of uh, restful access, uh, for example, I can download the file, upload the file through rest endpoints. Um, okay, a little bit slow. Yeah, so those are all the rest endpoints. And hopefully my viewer loaded. OK, it's not loading, but anyway. So it's supposed to um, uh, have an embedded image viewer so you can zoom through these images and pan and look at them. Right? And uh, let me go further. So uh, coming to Histomics DK, Histomics DK is being developed with uh, three kinds of uh, communities in mind, uh, the algorithm research community, and the pathologists and cancer biologists. Uh, and there are two modes of using histomics TK. One is uh, it can be used as a pure Python toolkit for algorithm development. It's, uh, uh, it aims to provide state-of-the-art algorithms for each component of the data analysis pipeline. So if you're working on one component of the pipeline, you can use algorithms from histomics TK for the rest and develop on just that one piece. And um, uh, it, uh, it can also be used as a girder plugin for web-based analysis. Uh, in this mode, it provides uh, a framework to uh, easily expose uh, analysis modules, command line analysis modules on the web. Uh, it provides a platform for researchers to uh, disseminate their solutions easily for wider use with minimal effort on their part. I'll do a demo on that. Uh, and it provides also a platform uh, for pathologists and biologists to look at what um, analytic solutions are there from algorithm labs and uh, pick and choose from them. And uh, it has a back-end engine for distributed um, task execution based on salary. Um, and uh, coming to the first mode of use as a Python toolkit, uh, these are all the algorithms that we are trying to build into Histomics TK. Uh, beginning with uh, pre-processing, there are uh, already some functions to do color normalization. If, the, if there is non-uniform staining in these images, you can correct for them and normalize them. Uh, there's color deconvolution, which involves basically you have an image that, wherein uh, multiple stains are applied and you uh, algorithmically separate these stains. Basically, uh, if you have a stain that uh, highlights uh, nuclei and a stain that uh, uh, highlight cytoplasm and extracellular structures, you can separate them and then run nuclei detection algorithms on them. We already have some nuclear morphometry um, uh, algorithms there. We are working on uh, cell and nuclear classification algorithms and immunohistochemistry immunohisto quantification, which is about staining them with uh, proteins, if you're looking for certain proteins uh, that you're interested in, and uh, tissue region classification, and lastly, integrative analysis with uh, genomic data. 
and uh, we use read the docs for our documentation. That is, uh, this is the API reference uh, that shows a high level view of the kind of functions that are there in Histom XTK. Um, and uh, coming to the second mode of use as a girder plugin for web based analysis, uh, this is the dashboard of uh, web based analysis. Uh, that's a screen screenshot just in case the demo doesn't work. Um, yeah. So, uh, so there is a way to open the image in the linked girder, girder instance, and then there is analysis. Uh, maybe I will explain this first um, and come back to this. Uh, at the core of this is basically uh, a way, a very simple framework to expose uh, command line analysis modules currently written in Python or C++, but we can add other languages as well. Uh, this framework exposes uh, any command line uh, analysis modules on the web. Uh, there's a protocol that you need to follow. So um, uh, what the developers need to do is uh, they create a folder uh, in their GitHub repository for each analysis module. They write uh, an XML file which describes the inputs, the types of the inputs, uh, the parameters, any default values, and outputs of the par and the output of the algorithm. And then they write a code, write the code, uh, which basically adheres to this XML spec. So let me quickly show you um, on command line how this works. So, oops, is it big enough? Bigger? Okay. Better? So in the in Histomic CK itself there are four analysis modules. I'll go into one of them. And you have a folder for each and every analysis module inside. There's an XML file which describes the input parameters and outputs. And there's a Python file which actually does the analysis. And so this is how the XML spec looks like. This is based on the slicer execution model. Uh, this is what uh, the slicer, the desktop application that I was talking about for medical imaging uses. And uh, we uh, made a way to expose these modules over the web. And it was very successful with Slice. So there are hundreds of plugins written by the community. So as you can see, there are like input. You can, so there, there's an input parameter. And there are some stain color parameters. And these are the outputs that this uh, module produces. Uh, and then there is this is the actual Python code that um, uh, does the analysis, and what we do, what we have is a, a Python package called ctkcli, which does the command line argument parsing and help for you. Uh, let me show you what this does. If I do dash dash help, so you basically uh, get usage help on how to use this command line module. What it's basically doing is it's parsing the XML file and generating this for you. And it also has um, dash dash XML endpoint, which basically throws out uh, the whole XML file. That is what is used to automatically generate a send point to use uh, that module over the web. So let me go back to my demo. The other thing that you write is basically a JSON file, which lists all uh, the analysis modules that you want to expose. Uh, hopefully this comes up. Yeah, OK. Uh, and then uh, you write this JSON file, and then you write a simple Docker file. You can derive from the Histomix TK's Docker image, which will install Histomix TK and all the dependent libraries for you. Uh, and then you install any requirements of your analysis module. And then you call an entry point that uh, we provide. And let me show you what that does on the command line again. Be this bigger. Okay. How am I doing on time? Okay. So 
I have a few Docker images that were generated that way. And let me run the Histomic SDK's Docker image. If I do dash dash help, so it basically generates uh, a help on how to uh, use uh, the Docker image. You can basically run any CLI command line module inside the Docker image. And then there is a dash dash list CLI endpoint, which basically throws out that JSON file contents. So we, um, there is a piece of code which basically analyzes the JSON file and then goes to the folder which has the analysis module, picks out the XML, and then generates the rest endpoint automatically for you. So, and let me go back here. And so you basically build the Docker file. There is a GitHub hook to automatically build the Docker image and upload it to Docker Hub. And uh, there are endpoints wherein I can simply go and add. You can send me an email uh, saying, hey, I want to host my Docker image, which contains uh, the algorithms developed in our lab on your website. And I can simply uh, go to a rest endpoint and add the Docker image. And it shows up here. And for each Docker image, there could be multiple versions. And, uh, and then for each, uh, for each Docker image, there are a bunch of analysis modules that it exposes. Uh, and the one you see on the left is basically the widget tree to set the parameters, inputs and outputs for the analysis module. Uh, and all this is also automatically generated from that XML file the developer writes. Uh, so there is like very minimal effort on the developer side to expose it on the web. And yeah, so. We also have the capability to render annotations like boxes, circles, contours, uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, all right. And what this does is uh, it gives a nice platform that pairs uh, different kinds of communities. Uh, so um, the pathologists and biologists have data questions. Uh, the uh, algorithm uh, researchers get the analytics needs from that community, develop their algorithms. They can uh, uh, use Docker. They can use our mechanism to um, uh, push it to uh, push it to an image on Docker Hub, and then we can host it on the website uh, from where the pathologists and biologists can access all the analytic solutions, compare between them, and choose between them. And um, lastly, uh, um, uh, some of software process stuff. Um, uh, Histomic SDK is on GitHub. Uh, we have documentation on read the docs. Uh, we are working on more documentation. There's uh, quite a bit there, but we are working on more. Uh, we haven't made uh, our official release yet. Um, uh, we are waking, waiting on improving the code coverage a bit. We are about 60% uh, about code coverage. We want to improve it a bit more. Uh, we use things to automatically generate uh, API documentation from the doc strings inside the functions. Uh, and there are some usage examples using Jupyter Notebooks on read the docs. Uh, and we use uh, Travis CI for continuous integration. And um, we use Vagrant and Ansible to ease the installation process. Uh, you can go to read the docs for more details. And uh, these are all the future work that we are planning. Uh, we'll probably make a release uh, sometime soon. Uh, and uh, we'll be adding more algorithms. We are looking into ways to speed up algorithms using Cython and uh, using Python wrapped ITK for um, whatever we can. And uh, we are working, so in the next year, we'll probably uh, uh, take up big data processing challenges. Basically, we want to process the uh, individual, uh, we want to parallelize the processing of individual tiles of these whole slate images. So these are basically stored in a pyramidal fashion. And at, at each level of the pyramid, the image is broken down into blocks or tiles. Right? Uh, we want to parallelize the processing of these blocks. Uh, we are looking at technologies of how to do this. Um, we'll be venturing into the omics side of things, uh, integrate uh, the, uh, in, uh, do integrative analysis with genomic and clinical data, uh, and a bunch of other stuff. Um, um, and Kitware is hiring. These are all the positions that are currently up on jobs.kitware.com. Uh, if you find, find one of them interesting, uh, go and apply for them. Um, thank you. So.
Thank you. We have time for questions. So. Uh, when you ask a question, please take the microphone so we can get it on the video. Do you find difficulty debugging um, in, the, in the whole web workflow? Or oh, a lot. Algorithm uh, problems? A lot, yeah. What are your experiences and suggestions? Um, so we had very minimal exception handling uh, before. Uh, we increased that a lot. Uh, Girder has a way to log exceptions wherever they occur. So right now, there is everything goes into a log file on the server. You can go and look there. Um, so this um, uh, mix of web application and scientific development, there are like some weird debugging issues uh, that you face with it. So yeah, that's there. So we are trying to make it as easy as possible for the algorithm developers. They, we want to make, make it feel like they're just developing a command line analysis module. They just have to import a particular Python package to do command line argument parsing. Um, and it's basically an executable. They can uh, test it on local files in the command line. And as long as uh, they use the CTK CLI package, we'll be able to easily uh, expose it over the web. So yeah, we want to make it as easy as possible for the algorithm developers. They, don't have, they shouldn't have to deal with um, complexities of exposing their algorithms over the web. Uh, and likewise, the pathologists and biologists, they don't want to develop algorithms. They just want to look at uh, different uh, state-of-the-art solutions that are, uh, that are out there for each analysis component, and then compare them in a black boxes fashion and then choose among them based on what works on their data. Um, yeah. So. Next question. Uh, well, I, uh, I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. uh, are your primary users histopathologists, and how do they feel about their new workflow? Uh, we haven't uh, um, brought this to them yet. Uh, we want to do that after our first release. Um, so um, our collaborators are at Imori University work very closely with pathology labs in the university. So they'll be our first users, and then we'll get a feel of how things are working. So thank you. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you very much. The viewer now works, so so you can just zoom through the images and. <laughs> yeah, the course of the live demo. <laughs> All right. uh, thanks, everyone.